The MacBook Air has been totally revitalized and is now not only a budget way to get into your first MacBook, but it also has some legit power behind it that isn't normally the standard for an Ultrabook. And you know what? You should absolutely buy one. So, uh, why is that? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Welcome back to the You Should Buy series, where I take all of this, all of that middle of the road, unbiased opinion stuff, and we chuck it. We chuck it straight out the window. Here's the unbiasedness, whoop, it's gone. We don't need that today. Today, I'm going to cover all of the amazing reasons why, if you are looking for a new MacBook, whether you're looking to get into your very first one, or maybe you don't want to carry around a gigantic 16 inch beast anymore, this is the MacBook for you. Quick note on the You Should Buy series, no, I don't expect you to buy everything I talk about in these videos, and yes, we'll do a separate one for the other M1 Macs, because frankly, they are all awesome, and there are reasons to buy each of those two, don't necessarily line up with this, we'll talk about those later. Move that also out the window. Disclaimers aside, let's get into it. I love these, these are right up there with accessory videos is my favorite to make. The very first reason you should buy this cheapest of M1 MacBook Airs is the price. Don't stress yourself, Gary, we gotta start off with those easy reasons first. Legit, some people, myself included, we just wanna spend the least amount of money possible to get certain features. Mac OS and its latest iteration, Big Sur, are absolutely features that you cannot find anywhere else. If you wanna get those, you need to buy a Mac. You want those features portable, and then you need to buy a Mac book. Get it, MacBook? Thankfully, for the moderately sized price of $999, you get the full Apple experience. And I want you to keep this in the back of your mind because we're gonna circle around back to the end of this. All of the incredible stuff that we're gonna talk about today, all of the updates inside of the MacBook Air, it costs the same amount as last year's model. Keep that in the old noodle. We'll prob you'll probably see that again. You don't have to take notes, there won't be a test. That cheapest model, which is the one that I personally own and have fallen in like-like with, will come with that M1 processor, eight core CPU, seven core GPU, eight gigabytes of unified memory, and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. The storm clouds are coming in. If I were to give it one weakness, if, oh, I said there's not gonna be, we're not all unbiased, but if there was one weakness, I wish it had more memory. But this isn't about those weaknesses, this is about being excited, so let's move on. The next reason you should buy the MacBook Air is the real key feature in this whole laptop. In fact, it's this feature that took the MacBook Air from being a computer that I might have recommended to you if, gigantic if here, you were only going to be typing documents, watching some YouTube, just very light things, and only if you were gonna do those one at a time. And that reason is the thermal performance. Now, okay, I get that not all of you that watch are as big a laptop nerds as myself. I personally think I have way too many of the darn things in my house right now. And with the pace of new releases, man, doesn't seem like that's gonna go down anytime soon. But all of these laptops and all of that experience has led me to one conclusion. The thermal performance on a laptop is, it is the most important feature. If we were to more simply state that, it's how much heat does your computer generate and how does it get that heat away from the important parts of your computer? Because that absolutely determines a few key things. One. It determines if you'll get all of the performance that you were paying for. Mac had a series of 15 inch MacBooks with very powerful Intel i9 processors. Those processors were very powerful. Unfortunately though, the system was unable to keep pace with the heat generated from that i9. And to make sure the system didn't do damage to itself, it would limit the power to the processor. So you were paying for one thing, but you weren't getting it. The second, if your computer is well vented thermally, it might just have some very obnoxiously loud fans to keep it at that level of coolness, which thankfully, even when we're talking about the current line of Intel Macs, they do have that pretty well controlled, but some of my powerful Windows laptops, they can be distractingly loud. All of that preface to say the thermal performance of the MacBook Air is awesome. And I mean, demanding awe, not just something cool to say. You don't have to worry about fan noise here because this machine doesn't actually have a fan in it. But Gary, if, if it doesn't have a fan in it, won't it overheat? No, other Gary. The M1 system doesn't generate all that much heat. And even when I'm doing pretty demanding tasks, the laptop, I mean, in fairness, the bottom of the laptop will get warm, but it never gets hot. And I've basically lived with the Thermlog up since getting this laptop, and I've never once seen the processor 
thermally throttle. That's not to say some serious events couldn't make it throttle, just that in my own use, which I mean is pretty demanding, I haven't seen it happen. Okay, lots of words about thermal performance, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Next up in the reasons to buy the MacBook Air goes hand in hand with that, handshaking the power. Normally when you buy an Ultrabook, it's to have a light, nimble, decently usable computer to carry with you everywhere to do things that you might need to do during the day. One of the traditional trade-offs of these kinds of computers is you have to give up certain power levels to get such a small, compact piece of tech. But what's weird here, and when I say weird, I mean awesome, this laptop has basically the exact same power on hand as the new Mac Mini and the new MacBook Pro 13. Yes, the base model here has one less GPU core, but I haven't seen a marked difference in using all three computers. That hasn't seemed like that big of a deal to me. So we're in this very unique position where this Ultrabook, this is an Ultrabook, it weighs almost nothing, takes up almost no space, makes no noise because again, it has no fan. This is a darn powerful computer. No, it's not the most powerful computer in the market. I still think the MacBook Pro 16 and desktop type alternatives, cough, cough, Mac Pro, I think those obviously do still beat it in certain tasks. But the fact that this is in contention with those much more powerful and not surprisingly, much more expensive options. That's legitimately mind blowing. And I don't just say this because I saw a number on a chart. We ran a benchmark, there was a number on a chart that was higher than another model. This week, just to prove that, I unplugged my other MacBook, popped this MacBook Air into my mount, plugged it into my dock, and I did all of my video work from it. To keep up with the lack of storage space, I had a Samsung solid state drive with all of my high efficiency video files and got to work like normal. In fact, this video right now is being edited in the same way. Hey Gary. He's always grumpy when he edits. I know you have to be kind of a laptop nerd and a video nerd to really appreciate what I just said, but like I've talked about over the last few weeks, high efficiency video files normally crush computers. They don't like to play back, they don't like to render, and you normally need to take an extra step to turn them into something else, into something more usable like Apple ProRes or some other easily editable file, these are called proxies, but that's more wasted time and it sucks to do, so I never do it. I'd rather buy a more expensive computer to handle my files than to waste time because you never get time back. And what's all, you just don't have to do that here and it's amazing and it's so amazing that I will probably keep mentioning it in all of these videos because this has totally changed my life when it comes to video production. The next reason to buy the MacBook Air is the overall work experience of using this laptop. This does get into more kind of touchy-feely zen things and less about hard numbers and computer science, so bear with me, because, you know, write down, you gotta enjoy your tech right here. The overall user experience on the MacBook Air is phenomenal. I use laptops in one of two ways. Earlier, you heard me talk about using this for video and photo editing. I use it in what I call dock mode. It sits on my desk, plugs into my dock, I've got a keyboard and a mouse. I'll treat it like a desktop computer. And thanks to these two Thunderbolt 3 ports, dang, I wish it was four Thunderbolt 3 ports, but thanks to these, you can easily do this. Plus, Bluetooth is in everything now, so I've got a pretty nice little wire-free setup that works just as well and just like one of my desktop computers. The second way is obviously just the laptop by itself. And Apple has a couple of things really going right on the MacBook Air. First, the keyboard. The keyboard, I won't go too long on it. You hear me heap praise on this every single video. I love the 13 inch version of the Apple Laptop Magic Keyboard. Remember, I have lots of laptops, I have lots of experience typing on laptops, and this is hands down my favorite. Plus, something that I don't talk about much anymore, but something else that Apple crushes, the trackpad on these things is gigantic, taking up a huge portion of the body of the MacBook. It is also another thing that is the best of its kind. It's very accurate, it's very sensitive, has equivalent clicks, no matter where on the pad you go, and it can be customized to work quite well with however you want to work. And there is no errant palm mouse movement if you happen to be typing on the computer and your palm goes over the pad while you're working. This is the best keyboard slash trackpad combination in the laptop game. Fight me. I'm, I'm telling a camera right now to fight me. Plus with the way the computer is slightly wedge shaped, using this to work from no matter where you are is the best. Working on a desk is comfortable. Sitting in a chair with your feet propped up on another chair. That sounds oddly specific. That's how I typed this part of the script out. It's very comfortable. To delve into that a little bit, you see the way the lip of this computer angles down. It keeps the computer's edge from being uncomfortable on non-traditional surfaces. So when you have it down on your lap, it doesn't hurt. And it's all of that together. The keyboard trackpad, the small compact size, the comfortable way it can be used basically everywhere. All of that is why I've been carrying, I've been carrying this laptop with me 
everywhere. The MacBook Air, it's gonna be surprising and it hurts to say, but it's pretty much replaced my iPad as my do everything computer. And on top of that, it's got Mac OS on it. If there's some iPad app or there's some iOS app that I just have to have, you can easily run those on the new M1 computers. It's just long story long about the user experience. It's wonderful. And that leads me into my next major reason you should buy this MacBook. <sighs> the battery life. It's incredible. Incredible. Of all the things we've already talked about, I can wrap my head around them pretty easily. It's got a great price, it's got decent power, it's awesome to use. Those are all physical things. They're physical things that I can get a handle on because of the way I use the computer. The battery life shouldn't be this good. The battery life on this computer shouldn't be this good. It's got a smaller battery than the Pro 13 or 16, and all of this added power, we said how powerful it is, it needs to be fed from something, but the efficiency on the M1 processors is insane. It's thesaurus other words for awe-inspiring. Apple gives this a 17-hour video watching battery life, which is also crazy. And in reality, for the way that I use this computer, I'll put it through pretty heavy workloads, like a little bit of gaming at night. I'll spend all day working on it, and sometime in the next day, whenever I have a moment, I'll need to charge it. I charge this thing maybe once a day, and that's all it needs. That's all it needs for all of the heavy lifting I require out of this computer. I don't keep it plugged in all that long, and I don't always top it off, but the darn thing just keeps going. And if you've got the screen closer, it's asleep. The computer loses almost no battery life. Combine that with the Apple standard, you get the full power when you're on the battery. This is literally like a mobile desktop. I'm on Twitter, I'm on the YouTube comments. I know it's easy to look at YouTubers or content creators talking about these admittedly entry-level Apple computers like they are made out of gold with no faults, and you can be cynical about our intentions. I get it. I get it. The internet has made us all cynical about everything. I'm telling you though, I'm telling you, the battery life on this is amazing. And it's hands down the best I've ever seen. Well, except for the MacBook Pro 13, but we'll talk about that in its own video. But at the end of the day, look, this is my favorite laptop released in 2020. Favorite laptop released in 2020. The MacBook Pro 13 is probably a little bit more practical. The Razer Blade 15 is still a monster that does everything well, just loudly and needs to be plugged in. And the XPS line, they look gorgeous. Probably the best looking laptops. This is my favorite because for its price, it should not have the levels of performance it does. For its levels of performance, it shouldn't be the size it is. And for its size and performance, it shouldn't be as well thermally managed as it is. Did, did you make, did we, do I need to draw a diagram for that? The diagram equals amazing. Getting back, okay, now we're circling back to that first topic we talked about. It's called the payoff, the price. You can spec this out a little more with additional memory and storage, but I've so far had no problems with eight gigabytes of unified memory and the 256 gigabyte solid state drive. I just keep an external fast drive with me for when I need to use this for video work. This, the MacBook Air, is just a crazy combination of price to performance that I'm not sure is matched anywhere else right now. Could something else come along? Sure, anything is possible, but today, this is about as good as it gets. And barring anything else crazy that comes out in the end of December, this will end the year as absolutely my favorite laptop, and you should totally buy one. And if you liked this video, you agreed, and you either have or are thinking about getting one of these, here's my video that shows all of my favorite accessories for this tiny titan of technology. That's the triple threat T. <laughs> click right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.